I'm going to show you a little bit of how to use the Kindle for PC app so that you can view your content on your laptop, you can read any books, see any notes and highlights. So when you open up your Kindle for PC app the very first time, if you've already downloaded it, you it'll bring up this little box here that says register your Kindle. So what you're going to want to do is type in your Amazon account email address, the one that is associated with your Kindle where you have your ebooks. So if it is uh, for me, it's actually my my husband's email address. <clears throat> because we share one account, that way we can share books. For a student, this may be a parent's email address. They may have their own Amazon account and they put their email address, but it's the Amazon account email address that has the ebooks associated. So I'm gonna enter that information and be right back with you in a second. All right, so I have now typed in my Amazon account information, and here is what the Kindle for PC app screen looks like. We have over here library, all items, downloaded items, archived items. Now I've used this app before even though I just showed you how I logged in. So I've already downloaded some of the books from the archived items. So when you are first opening this, you're going to see that a lot of your, none of your books probably will appear in this window. There may be some books in the public domain like Treasure Island or Aesop's Fables. Um, but you're going to need to download any text that you want to see from your archived items. So you would click on archived items and this is all of the books that are in my archived items on my Kindle. So for example, let's say I would like to open up Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. So I'm going to double click that and now it's going to download Bossy Pants from where I have it stored on the Amazon website to my laptop. Now it's actually on, it's living, a copy is living on my laptop so that I can um, reference that. So let me go back to my library. So all items, uh, there's all items now. If it has this little cloud, you need to download the book from the cloud. If it doesn't have that, it is already there. Here are my download items. These are the items that I have put onto this particular laptop. So for example, I just uh, finished reading with my freshman hotel on the corner of Bitter and Sweet. So I'm going to double click that and open it up. Now here is sort of a default view. And let me show you some of the options we have here. We have the table of contents. I can very easily go to the table of contents, the beginning, or to a page or location. I can type in right there. I can search. Let's say um, I know that there is a, a quote I'm looking for that involves um, the word, a, a particular phrasing. I can type that in. So, for example, I'm going to, I can look here at this quote right now, uh, Bachelor Hotel. So let's say I was looking for Bachelor Hotel. And it's going to give me all of the instances when the word bachelor hotel shows up. And I can click on those, it'll take me directly to them. So for example, I can click there. I actually tell me, you are here. Or I can go there, you were here, yeah, I was there. So here's the other time the phrase bachelor hotel was mentioned. And then here we have notes and marks. So let's say that I want to see everything I have highlighted, bookmarked, or any time I have made a comment typed in a comment onto my Kindle. This is the entire list of all of them. Okay, so yellow stands for highlight and the blue is for a note. Now if you notice, here we have page three, location 73. That's a highlight, there's also a note attached since they have the same page number and location. Now I can also edit my notes from this point. So what I prefer is to use my Kindle Touch to do highlighting and initial note taking and then I can come back to my PC and I can edit those comments. So for example here, let me go back to this previous page, uh, sorry I lost my spot. Okay, so here is this, this is my sort of quote here. Uh, even the old bachelor hotel had stood it as a gateway between Seattle's Chinatown and Neonmachi Japan, Japantown. So if I want to read the note, I can click that there. Now right here in this box, I can edit, I can add text, make more notes, or I can uh, or I can edit what I've already written, okay? And then I can just click save, or I can delete this note, or I can cancel, okay? Um, so this is how I can view, and I can easily go to, I can also search my notes and marks. Oh, and I can choose. Notes only, highlights only, bookmarks only, popular highlights. So I have some options there. Um, okay, so let's say, um, let's look at the other options we have here. If I want to make this go away, I'm just going to click on that. It's going to disappear. So I have some options as to how I view. I can view this page very wide. I can view it very narrow. I can view more than one column. 
maybe I want to see, maybe I, maybe my particular style of reading is that I would like to use the two column and read this way. Okay, I can make those choices. I can change the font, the font size, the brightness now. I can choose a different contrast. I could do sepia or I could do black, which is black background, white text. Now this, I've heard the argument is that this is better on your eyes um, because there's not as much light in this black area. There's not as much light and light is often blamed as the culprit for headaches when reading from a screen. I personally have not tried it, um, so I don't have a preference. I, I prefer the white with the black text personally. Um, I have yet to discover what my personal feeling is. This is also um, an add a bookmark and sync to the furthest page read. So that means if I click that, I'm going to go to the furthest page that I have read um, on my Kindle. So perhaps I was reading at home last night on my Kindle and I come to school and I want to pick back up where I left off, my laptop's going to preserve where I last read on my laptop. It may not, I have to sync to the furthest page read for it to um, go to the page I read at home. So this is how you're keeping your home reading and your laptop reading or wherever your Kindle reading and your laptop reading to the same page. It's going to ask me. I am currently on page 3, but I've read to page 299 on my Kindle 2 at 9.09 p.m. on December 17th, 2011. So do I want to sync to the furthest page read? I could do that. It's actually the very last page. Okay, and here are the page turning buttons here. These, this is the, uh, the reading section at the end of the book. So we have these, um, this is how we go page back and page forward. I actually don't like it this wide, so I'm gonna, I like it to look, that's my preferred orientation. Um, so we can go back to the library, and again, all of the same, I can make a collection, but as I was saying, all of the same functions that are available to you on the Kindle Touch are available here, so I can highlight, and then I can just click highlight or add note. I can copy. I can also book extras by Shalfari. Oh, there's book extras. Dictionary, Google, report content area, search this book, and Wikipedia. So maybe I want to Wikipedia a particular reference. I'm reading Pride and Prejudice right now. I don't necessarily, oh, Michaelmas. Let's say you are reading this and you think I've, well, I can highlight it and it'll pop up the dictionary. Michaelmas, the Feast of St. Michael, September 29th, Old English. Maybe I would like actually to know more about this. Maybe I want to Wikipedia this. It's gonna open up another window and it's going to give me, I can go right to Wikipedia for this and find all about the Feast of St. Michael. Okay, um, So all of the same things that are available to you on a Kindle Touch are available on this. You can also, since I have a tablet, you can't see me doing this, but I'm actually using my, my pen. You're going to notice I'm moving my mouse out with my pen. I can actually highlight with my pen. So I could put my laptop into tablet mode and then I could, or slate mode as they're calling it now, um, and I could highlight with my pen. Now the typing is not as easy, but you can highlight with the pen as well. Okay, we put my pen away here. Um, let me go back to library. Uh, so this is an easy way to see your books, to easily open them, to read them if you desire, here, to search their table of contents. Maybe I want to go to chapter four, flag duty, and I want to read from there. This also brings up an easy way to search. This I find really helpful. So a student says, oh, you remember when um, they mentioned the parasol? So you can type in the word parasol, and every time that word is show, it shows up, you can click that link and find that location, and it gives you a page number and a location number. You can also search, and then you can also view your notes and marks. So this is a really easy way to, so for example, in my school, Active reading is a really important part of what students are doing. So I have a student who reads on her Kindle, and when I ask to see the, the active read and the reading that students are doing, she opens this up on her laptop, and she can breeze through for me through the list. And I can say, oh, well, show me what you did in um, you know, the, a certain chapter. I can see here the page numbers and see what she was highlighting and writing. And I can also, she can also click it and show me the highlights. In the notes. She could also pop that up and say, oh, that was something that I that I wrote. So this is how I am maintaining the act of reading in a classroom using Kindles.